Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. This video is going to be another in the series about uh, doing study sessions and practice sessions for the RHCSA exam. Before I dive in, I want to remind you, if you enjoy the content of the video, make sure you click like on the video. Also, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell when you do. And I want to welcome back um, current subscribers to, to my um, channel. Hopefully, you'll in, enjoy this uh, video as I hope you've enjoyed uh, other videos that you've watched. So, um, these sessions are intended to be authoritative information. Um, I'm, that being said, I'm trying to give as accurate of information as I can, but remember the scope of these is me kind of talking through some of the exam objectives to, to see if I feel like I I'm, uh, know what I'm talking about and hopefully we'll do well on the um, on the exam. Feel free to, to leave um, comments in, in, in particular if, if these um, study sessions have helped you as far as your own studies toward the RHCSA exam or if you feel I've got something wrong as far as my information by all means leave a comment about that so that way both myself and anyone else that's watching the video can can uh, learn and have accurate information so the topic for this particular video is under the operate and operate running systems portion of the exam objectives and this is going to be boot systems into different targets manually so i'm going to log in to my uh, system here and when we talk about targets this is system D for um, that's kind of odd wasn't expecting to see that hmm. anyway targets are basically like run levels from the the init system you have uh, targets such as multi-user target which is just the um, the console access right you have graphical target which is what I'm booted into right now that has the GNOME um, desktop interface you have reboot target which in, in that particular target you're doing the things to reboot your system you also have um, emergency target and rescue target some of the lower level um, not like fully well you, you you are fully booted into your system but not every service and such is running uh, those are mainly used for if, if something has happened that does not allow the system to fully boot you can boot into these targets to try to do some uh, troubleshooting and I'll, I'll demonstrate that so to switch into or boot systems in, into different targets manually I'm, I'm actually going to show you two things one is switching targets while you're already booted into a system and and then the other would be literally as the objective says boot into different targets manually so if you wanted to switch targets I'm going to go into my terminal here and this isn't too difficult to do I can aim correctly in my VM. Bring up my terminal. All right. And some targets allow you to switch into them like this. Some cannot. One that I know does is the multi-user target. And so to be able to switch into uh, uh, another target, we'll do system CTL. Actually, I need to do this as sudo. System CTL isolate and then whatever the name of the target is in this case I want to go into the multi-user target I'll feed it my credential and what's going to happen is I've moved out of the desktop target or the graphical target and I'm now in the command line I can log in I'm now as if I'm, I'm sitting in, in, in front of the console. I've, uh, I've moved into another target. You can figure out what your um, default target is. System CTL get default. It says my default uh, right now is multi-user target. If I want to, I can set that default to be something else. Um, set default graphical.target. Notice it um, created a sim link there. So now if I, if, I, if I were to reboot my system, it's going to reboot into the graphical target. So let's try that now. And so even though I changed into the multi-user target, 
in just a moment. This should finish booting and we will see the login for GNOME. And lo and behold, we're now back in the graphical target. So as far as the boot systems into different targets manually, I'm going to reboot the system and do that via, um, via KVM here. And we're going to press the arrow keys to interrupt the grub boot process. We're going to select whichever kernel that we intend to boot into. And what we're going to do is edit the, um, the grub commands. So I'm going to choose the top kernel there, press E. And what you're looking for is either the Linux or Linux 16 line. I believe in um, CentOS 7 and probably Red Hat 7, that would be a Linux 16 line. Um, what I have noticed with um, CentOS 8 is that it is just a, a Linux line instead of Linux 16. So what we're going to do is add to the end of this line, so right after the quiet, we're going to add systemd dot unit equals whatever the name of the target is that, that we want to boot into. So I know that my default target is the graphical target. Let's say that I know that, that there's going to be some issue with the, um, the, the desktop environment. So I want to force this to boot into the multi-user target. So I'll do systemd dot unit equals multi user dot target and then we'll press control X to finish the boot process and in just a moment this will boot into the multi-user target which is going to be the um, the command line only interface the terminal interface and there we go let me log in and so now we're in Let's do systemctl get default. And notice the default is still graphical target because I have not changed whatever my, my default is. I just interrupted that boot process with systemd.unit equals multi user target to, for this one time, boot the system into the graphical target. Now, if we want to, I'm actually going to, oh, we can do this in the, on the command prompt as well. Let me clear my screen. Systemctl list units type target all and you see all of the various targets now not all of these targets are going to be targets in, in, into which you can boot you know we have our rescue.target uh, there's actually a reboot target as well though it's not appearing on this list you have emergency.target and not, not, not to go in, into too deep of a discussion of what these targets are, basically these targets are, um, are like collections of unit configuration files. And what happens when you boot into a target, you're going to be loading these different little things within systemd. And depending on the target you load to, that will, um, that will load whatever it is it's supposed to. And I want to think um, list dependencies is the as far as system CTL I'm trying to think how, how to do this off the top of my head if I wanted to, to list a dependency let's do graphical I think this is what I want to do graphical.target no I want to do list dependencies I think this is what I want to do let's see yep all right so for the graphical.target these are all the things that are going to load and if I were to keep going here, you see a lot of things are loaded. Some of the things haven't loaded just yet. If you were to look into the dependencies for these other unit configuration files, you'll be able to see what they have. One thing I did want to show you, if I were to do that list dependencies, systemctl list dependencies. Spell that right. We're going to do rescue.target. Track it, target. All right. And if you notice, there are only 49 things in this list for rescue.target. There are far few things, uh, fewer things than graphical.target. And that makes sense. The rescue.target is just kind of getting the system up to a semi functional state to where you can 
potentially um, troubleshoot whatever the, um, the, the the problem is going on, fix that to where you can boot the system into um, into the normal target that it would come into. And then you can also look at um, emergency.target. They are slightly different. And notice the emergency.target, all you have is emergency service. That's it. Now, I'm just curious. I think I mentioned in another video, I've learned a good bit just kind of poking around and being curious and officially going after an objective. Let's look at the dependencies for emergency.service. All right. And notice the emergency.service only has just, just a, a, a couple of dependencies itself. One thing that I have noticed, currently the root account is locked. And what I've noticed is, um, I believe this is true for emergency, I'm not sure if rescue will try it out in just a second, but if the root account is locked, you would not be able to boot into those emergency and rescue targets. And I learned this from working with, um, with the Stratus um, storage management, and I had messed up my uh, etcfs tab for that, and the system couldn't boot, and it also could not, like, it would it like booted into the I think the uh, emergency dot target, but I wouldn't have been able to log in to do anything because the the root account was disabled. So to kind of give you some proof positive of that, let's reboot, and we're going to go into emergency dot target. So again, find the Linux line, add systemd dot unit equals emergency dot target, control X. I believe it's going to complain that even though I've booted into the emergency.target, I won't be able to do anything. Let's see if I'm right. Oh, wait. Ah, yeah. Cannot open access to console. The root account is locked. If I press enter, great. It's um, it's going to try to start our uh, default target, which, of course, default target is going to, to, to work for this because, you know, nothing is broken with my VM right now. But what I want to do... Let me log in here. I'm going to use passwd to um, give root a password. Just because I don't want to try to unlock the root account without a password. I'm going to use sudo for that, obviously. Hear my cat in the background complaining. All right, so I've now set a password for root. Let's reboot. Again, we'll interrupt the boot process. Press E to edit the grub configuration. And we'll go to the end of the Linux line systemd.unit equals emergency dot target control X and we should be able to actually log in when we're in the emergency target now yep give root password for maintenance so all right and so now I'm I'm, I'm logged in so it's just this, this, this one thing to keep in mind, the emergency target is not going to be available to you if you would not be able to otherwise log in as the root account. So not too long of a video. It's a pretty easy thing to, to boot into the, the other targets manually. The key is you need to know the, the names of the targets. And I would say it would be important to you know, know multi-user.target emergency.target and rescue.target because I would imagine of the various targets those will be the three that you're probably going to need to boot into should you need to manually uh, boot into something and then of course to do that um, using uh, interrupting the grub boot process pressing E for the kernel that you want and just adding that systemd.unit equals whatever.target so I hope you found it useful if you did make sure you click like also subscribe ring the bell when you do Thank you for taking the time to watch, and I'll see you the next time.